In the past month, I've had two letterbox highlights videos claimed by YouTube's content ID system. You know that series where I promote films and tell you to go watch them? Because I showed the trailers in the videos, despite the fact that I jump cut so you don't see the trailer in full and you only see the visuals and it's on a fucking TV, they still get flagged. So this series is going to be in flux for a bit while I try and figure out exactly how I want to present it because I don't just want to do posters because it's so visually boring. However, I didn't want YouTube to ruin the fun. Therefore, in case you didn't already know, Letterbox Highlights is a series where I recap the best and most interesting films I've watched in the previous month. This time, we're taking a look at May of 2019. There's something magical about this film. In case you didn't already know, I do have a soft spot for 50s America, so that kind of appeals to me anyway. The, this film has amazing production design, lovely use of saturated color in places, Scotty's dream is wonderful, Madeline slash Judy's screen presence is... <sighs> Man. These things remind me what film can be. It doesn't have to be grounded, gritty, and washed out. It can be whatever it wants because the medium allows it. It's a film like this that allows me to f fall in love with the medium all over again. What Hitchcock achieves with the narrative of this film is to be commended. Normally I don't have an issue with spoiling older films, but there's something about this film that I really want people to go into it blind, to enjoy it as much as I did. If you don't care about spoilers, then read my full review that's up on Letterboxd. Anyway, what a glorious piece of filmmaking. Narratively, this is the weakest entry in the Wick franchise so far. However, that's never really what these films have been about. These films have always been about the amazing action, and this one delivers in spades, producing quite possibly some of the best fight sequences and car chases and fucking, well, horse chases and set pieces of the franchise so far and that's saying a lot because the first two contain some absolutely jaw-dropping action. Here's the thing, there's not a lot of films quite like this or the other two work films, at least not from American directors and if you've already seen the first two you're probably gonna watch this and probably gonna enjoy this anyway because being honest who enters the franchise at number three? Like how does that make any sense? If watch the fucking first two films, the great action films, and then watch this. Yeah. Watch John Wick. An exercise in futility. That's how I felt after watching this. Do I understand this film? Probably not. But I guess that's kind of the fun of it. It managed to maintain my interest and intrigue for a majority of the runtime. And while I guess the narrative and the content of the piece is subject to interpretation, the one thing that's not is just how fucking stunning this film is visually and how gorgeous an aesthetic it has. Abstract work doesn't always click with me, but I really enjoyed this one. In case you didn't know, I'm a Man City fan. Born and raised. Here's some proof. Anyway. <laughs> Anyway, Pep Guardiola has helped me fall back in love with football after kind of falling away from the game for a couple of years. What he has achieved with City and what he's been able to do with our style of football is nothing short of amazing. And I will never stop being thankful to that man. And I got to be a part of history. Anyway, back to the film. Uh, this is an interesting look at Pep's years at Barcelona and the foundation of what would become his coaching philosophy and tactics. If I'm being entirely honest, this film probably doesn't dive as deeply as you would expect, but I'm, as I previously mentioned, I'm a massive pet mark and I love this. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I, I love this, uh, fuck. If you, if you like football and you wanna know more, first check out T4 Football on YouTube, then watch this documentary. Just like Godfather 1 and Part 2, this film has taken me far too long to get around to watching, but one experience, a 3 plus hour epic. It's another one of those films where I don't really want to sit and deconstruct why it's so good. 
And I kind of just want anyone who hasn't seen it already to go in blind because then you get to experience it like I did. Like I, I kind of knew what happened, but at the same time I didn't, which isn't too bad. What I will say though is 10 out of 10 on the amount of cross faded and double exposure frames. I've grown to love that shit over the last couple of years and this film perfects it. And that's it for another Letterbox Highlights. Sorry about the whole fucking still image thing, but again, YouTube's copyright system is completely fucked. I am going to figure out what to do with this series if it kills me, but... For now, I think I'm just going to sit back and relax because I've been on this site for probably more than a decade at this point and I've never stopped being annoyed by YouTube's copyright system. See, back in the day, I could see it because I was using copyrighted music. Now I literally have a series where I'm basically reviewing, which is classed as fair use, so technically I can use the trailers anyway, but then... It's not even like I'm being negative. I'm just talking about positively about films and basically telling you people to go fucking watch the films. How is that a bad thing? In fact, one of the fucking claims was manual, which means somebody literally found my video and claimed it for copyright, despite me saying all this good shit about whatever film I was talking about. And... I fucking hate YouTube. Like seriously. Fuck this site.